We're here at the Epicurean Hotel here in Tampa, Florida to teach some of the most basic core knife skills to a group of very special bloggers. Get ready, it's gonna be a blast. We're gonna do some cooking demos, we're gonna do some knife skills, and then we're gonna tidy it all up with an awesome potato salad challenge. We are all about the Idaho potato. When I see things on the internet, a lot of times people are doing stuff, but the basic skills are hmm, interesting, okay? <laughs> and not always really safe. This is a huge problem. How often I see people cutting and the cutting board is moving with them, which is A, annoying, and B, unsafe. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, which is at your station, which is a paper towel, and you just need to get it ever so lightly damp. You can use a cloth for this. Some people also sell little mesh things that you can put under your board. That's fine as well. But basically, take this, put it under your board, like so, and now all of a sudden, your board is anchored to your table. That's all you have to do. It all starts with this knife. This is a chef knife. It can do a multitude of different things. This just is an extension of my arm. I mean, it's sort of shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, knife. It just flows. Notice the way we grab the knife is we put our thumb and forefinger on the blade. If I'm holding the blade, I have 100% control of the knife. In addition to that, it should balance right there. So basically, I'm holding the knife at the balance point of the knife. Some people call it a rocking motion. I don't like that term because when I hear rocking motion, what people do is they go whoop. It's always forward and down, forward and down, forward and down, forward and down. Okay, great. That's the easy part. This is the more important hand. This is the hand we call the guiding hand. So if you think about driving your car, this is your accelerator pedal. This is power, power. This is your steering wheel. First of all, notice the tips of my fingers are tucked under. I see people a lot of times, they do this. Their fingers are down. Well, the problem with that is that when I actually go to cut something, I am not able to grip it, right? If my fingernails are down, guess what? I can grip the product. See the difference? So be sure that they're angled and the fingernail is touching whatever it is that you're cutting. Number two, notice that my hand is up in the back. The knife is actually touching my finger right here. It's actually touching my finger. Technique first, technique, go slow. And so it goes like this, it goes cut, slide the hand back, cut, slide the hand back, cut, 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 down and forward, down and forward, down and forward. Now, if really you're, you're kind of saying, oh, I don't, I just, I don't like that idea. I don't like that idea of like, you know, ugh, like touching your hand. I'm watching you. The minute it doesn't touch my finger, I don't know where it is. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a potato and you're basically gonna take this potato and you're gonna cut it in half and then just make some slices. You know, if they're not like perfect slices right now, that's, that's fine. Get comfortable with slices. After that, I'm gonna ask you to try a couple dices. To make a dice, very simply, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create kind of a, a rectangle, if you will. In culinary school and in, in the professional world, we're crazy about these cuts. Everything's gotta be perfect and like we're crazy. But for you, if it's not like perfectly perfect, perfect, that's okay. And what you're gonna do then is you're gonna make a slice. And then you're gonna take this and you're gonna cut these into sticks and then you'll cut them into dices. Like so. The only way you ever learn how to do this well, I mean, nobody is born like that just takes hours and hours. And I encourage you to practice like crazy at home, you know, with potatoes. Ladies and gentlemen, start your potato engines. Let's go.
Mm. <laughs> That's good. I never would have thought that you could make risotto with potatoes. No, me neither. Unbelievable. <laughs> now I'm going to every week. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So we had a competition, divided up the bloggers into groups of four and five, and then they had 30 minutes to make the most creative, beautiful, and best tasting potato salad of their lives. And we gave them lots of ingredients to play with, and in the end, they did it, we judged it, and one team won. Our strategy today is that we're gonna go Greek. We're going Latin. Five minutes. I need four samples from each table in five minutes. Every team has got a different idea, a different approach to what makes a great potato salad, but it all includes Idaho potatoes. Team one. One. 